In this video, I want to show you the four parts to my off-grid school bus conversion. You just go to town. I'm recording the whole thing. Okay, we're going to start with a little bit of theory here. So, you can charge your bus from four different sources. Shore power, generator, solar panels, or the alternator. And I'll take you through each one of these legs individually. Alright. But just, just for the sake of flow, the shore power goes through a surge protector, and then into a transfer switch, then up to your main breaker, to the air conditioners, then into the inverter charger, over to your breaker panel, and then out to your light. The generator takes the same path, uh, and then the solar and the alternator, the solar goes through a charge controller, into your batteries, and then down through the bottom, and the alternator does the same. Also, your shore power, your generator, and your alternator all charge your starting battery. So everything in the, the black boxes are down in your bay. All of this is in your cabinet. Now on your surge protector, there's a three minute time delay when you plug it into shore power. So be aware of that. You won't get juice immediately. Let's start outside now and we'll go through each one of these lines and then we'll bring it up and it'll all conclude in here. So you have your main uh, power cord. Right now it's, it's a 50 amp cord. We have a 50 to 30 adapter. If you pull up to a place that only has 30, you would use this. And then we have a 30 to 15 adapter, which you're plugged into now. And then there's an extra cable in the back if you want to extend the big one for a total of 50 or 60 feet. And of course you can buy another one if you should need that. So your shore power goes into here first. And then this is the, this is the surge protector that has a three minute time delay. After this senses that the voltage is stable, it kicks on and sends your signal into the transfer switch. Essentially your shore power is plugged into the transfer switch and your generator is plugged into the transfer switch. It always defaults to the shore power. Then if your generator kicks on, it switches over to the generator. And if neither the generator is on or the shore power is plugged in, then they're just off. This wire right here is for your furnace. 12 volt is fused it's the only 12 volt power you have in your bus. So I just wired it directly to the batteries. It has a 3 amp fuse, I believe. Your generator also starts off of these batteries. And also these batteries are charged by your alternator. Back in here, this fuse up here, this fuse is for the generator and the inverter inside. This breaker right here is for your alternator. If the line is severed between your batteries and the alternator, this will trip and protect your batteries. If the line is severed between your batteries and your generator and or your inverter charger, then that fuse will, will break and protect your batteries as well. I think that's it. Here's your alternator. There's a charging line that comes right off the alternator. Okay. It goes up through this solenoid. This solenoid is triggered by a little signal wire. The signal wire is tied into somewhere in here. So when you turn your bus on, it sends a signal to this switch. It opens the switch and sends your alternator charging over to the batteries. It also goes through this breaker, so if the line is severed between your engine and the, and the solar batteries, this will trip and it will protect both the batteries and the alternator. Incidentally, if you need to service any of these, you just turn that off. If for some reason you're not charging, you might check this. When you're driving, you're charging off both the sun and your alternator, but both your alternator and your solar charge controller are designed to not overcharge your batteries, so they'll always stay at the right voltage the whole time. When you're plugged into shore power like you are right now, then there's a battery charger in here. So if you leave your lights on or whatever, when you're plugged into the shore or when your generator is running, you're always charging your house, or I'm sorry, your coach batteries. Okay? So let's just back up. Your alternator has charged your solar batteries. Your solar panels are also charging your solar batteries. They're obviously mounted to the roof. They are connected to the charge controller. The charge controller is connected to the batteries and this has a little menu on it tells you how much charge you're getting this keeps your batteries from overcharging now there is a breaker between the panels and the charge controller if something were to happen if a cord was to fry or something in between this is the breaker right here 
right now your panels are off. They're not charging anymore. There's also a breaker in between the charge controller and the battery bank. That's this one, charge control. So right now your panels are still communicating with this, but this is not charging those. And earlier when I came in here, this was off. Hmm. I don't know why, that might've been an accident. Your batteries come back up and they feed into your inverter charger, which is this. This then directly feeds your main circuit panel. The little remote on the wall up there is your brain. It just gives you information about all the components of the system. So I think that's the solar alternator side of things. And then on the generator shore power side of things. Oh, I'm sorry, there's one other thing on the solar side. There's a breaker in between your batteries and the inverter charger, and it's right here. It's labeled main inverter. So that kills the connection between this and your batteries, which is super important. Okay, sorry if this is really boring. When you're plugged into shore power like you are now, or when your generator is running, they're both fed through this breaker right here. This feeds your air conditioner circuit front and rear. This inverter button is referring to your inverter. The charger refers to your solar charge controller. This generator button is obsolete because we're not tied, we don't have your generator tied in to this particular brainiac part of the system. The AC input refers to when your generator or your shore power are connected. When you push the inverter button, it tells you that the mode is it's on, it tells you how much AC voltage it's putting out, it tells you the voltage of the batteries. Now the reason the charger light is not lit is because you don't have enough sunlight right now to engage it. So during the day when you have full sun, this will light up and it will tell you more information about your solar input. That's the charge controller. Okay. Which is this one up here on the wall. Okay. This black one. It's between your solar panels and your batteries. Okay. It, it um, prevents your batteries from being overcharged by the sun. And then when I turn on the AC breaker, which I'll do now, this will automatically switch from inverter to AC. This is flashing. When this becomes solid and that goes off, then we are officially switched over. Incidentally, this light just came on because the charge controller sensed that there was maybe just a little bit enough sun to charge your batteries, just a little, a little, a little bitty, tiny bit. And for the solar system, how long can we go without the sun? How long can we run all our things without the sun? Based on the calculation that we did, you should be able to run your refrigerator, your computers, your camera batteries, a few lights, and the basics for a full day on in the middle of winter. In the summertime, you'll be able to get more out of it. But we size your system to be to give you enough power for a full day with the least amount of sun that you could possibly get yeah. on an average day. And how many so, watts or amps is that? Uh, well, there's 900 watts of panels. I forget the amp hour amp hours on your battery bank. So six panels, 900 watts. They're 100. And what that means is one fridge, eight lights. A compu two computers and a bunch of charging batteries. And your toilet fan and your water pump. The Wii Boost internet. The internet. I think that's, I think that's everything. Bracken, thank you very much for putting in the solar and overseeing the overall power project and making sure everything works good. You bet. And then teaching that to me. Thanks Hopefully. for letting me help you out. <laughs> Hopefully I won't be calling you from the road. One you can one and I'll help you the best I can. Okay good thanks. Yep. If you want to see more about this system, Bracken created two videos. One where he put in the AC and another one where he put in the solar. I'll leave those links in the description.